Okay, going to live code through something here. Got a student that's having an issue, and this is his uh, Git repository. I asked him to upload the whole project, and it's a lot easier for me to troubleshoot stuff like that. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and clone it to my own Git, GitHub account. Or, I'm sorry, fork it. So I want to fork this to, to my Git. So it's forking over to mine right now. And then I will... Uh, download it to mine. So there, there's the fork. Now I want to clone or download it. So I'm going to just copy that over. Jump over here to the terminal. So clone that down. Now I want to come over to IntelliJ and open up this project. So I'm going to say new project from existing sources. And you can see I'm working on some Spring 5 right, stuff right now. So come down here to source. I think I put it in temp. A different temp. <laughs> Got a couple temp directories. So Spring Data. And go ahead, click open. I'm going to step through this in IntelliJ. I'm going to import the project. Take all the defaults there. That looks fine. And say OK. Select the uh, JDK to use. And let's see what we got here. And of course, it opened up in a different window. Bring that over to the one we're recording on. Now what he's telling me is we're having a problem with when we're logging in, so working on some Spring Security stuff, and say if we leave the credentials blank, uh, the program crashes. So let's take a look at that now. So we'll go ahead and start this. Told you it's finished uh, indexing the project. And now this is coming up because there's no git git ignore uh, in the project. So we, I'll fix that for him in a minute. We don't want to add that. Yep. And I have uh, Tomcat running somewhere else. I think it's probably in my spring five cores. Yep, he's running there. So go ahead and kill that. Come back over to this. And try that one more time. Should run better if it doesn't have a port conflict. So we are up and running. So let's go over to Chrome and take a look at what's happening here. So it's working okay. There we are. So the problem is it crashes. So, yep, we're getting a 500 error. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's happening. Take a look at the stack trace. So we're getting an NPE there. So we have a boolean there, and that has not been initialized. So so what we can do is uh, set a default value for that. Go ahead and restart this. I don't think we have Spring Boot DevTools cooking. Try this again. 
There we go. So it's just that little null pointer error. So now, now that validation is working correctly. And he's also having a problem with the H2 console. So let's take a look at that. He's saying that it's coming up to a blank database. It's actually not coming up to anything at all. So, I know exactly what that is. That's in the spring config. I'm going to pause this one second. I need to look something up. Okay, I had to look up a couple things there on the, the spring security and actually found my own blog post to be helpful, that one that I wrote a while back. Um, so a couple things uh, wrong with the setup here. The ignoring ant matchers there on line 53 um, should have a, a wild card there. Um, and then the, the reason that it was coming up blank, uh, we both need to disable uh, CSRF, but we also need to do the header frame options and disable that as well. So that's where the spring security is interfering with the H2 database console. So I've made those a uh, couple tweaks there. Uh, and then on line 57, I, I also explicitly said to permit all to the uh, h2-console pa URL path. And I've restarted uh, Spring Boot already. And if we come over here uh, and test it out, you can see that it does come up. And we can uh, come in and, and see our, uh, take a look at users. And we can see that the H2 database console is in fact working. Now, one thing that uh, often does trip people up, and I disconnect here, is you gotta watch this JDBC URL. So if you come in and have that URL wrong, different from what Spring Boot is defaulting, uh, when you try to connect, now you can see I did connect, but I'm connecting to a blank database. So it's not the database that we're working, and that, that often confuses people where they don't have that uh, URL correct. And then they come in and say, well, I don't see my tables. Well, technically, you're connecting to a different H2 in-memory database with the database console, so something that definitely trips people up. But just to review that one more time, uh, again, that was the spring security causing this to uh, misbehave. So it's specifically these, these headers here. So I'll comment that out and show you the behavior again. So that it's these uh, frame options that are going to mess with the H2 database console. So we are almost backing up. There we are. So now I can come in, refresh this, continue. And when I connect, you can see that it's just a blank page. Come back over here. Undo that. Bounce spring boot. And we are back up. Now if I refresh this page, now I can say connect and we connect normally. So now I'm going to come over to IntelliJ. We shall commit that. And technically, if I was working on this for a company, I wouldn't have done two commits here, two separate commits. So always remember, small incremental commits. And we'll go ahead and uh, commit and push that. And that is up on GitHub. And we'll come over here. Now 
do a pull request. And now he'll, he will get that uh, request from me and he'll be able to see my changes. And of course, I'm going to sh share this video with him and uh, get him going again.